All right, and we will go ahead and get started this morning. Again, thank you everyone for joining us today for our wellness workshop with Dr. Michael Brown on physical vitality. Uh, we're really pleased that you could take some time out of your schedule today to do so. Uh, as a quick reminder, many of you are probably familiar with our format, but for anyone new, uh, everyone is muted right now and will remain on mute throughout the webinar. Uh, that means that if you want to communicate with us, you have two ways to do so. One is if you'd like to ask a question of Michael about the content that he's sharing, please use the Q&A dialog box to do so. There's a button on your Zoom dashboard for Q&A. Press that, it'll open the window. You can ask a question. Uh, if I can handle it uh, in writing, I will. If not, I'll indicate it's going to go live to Michael. Uh, and uh, you can also upvote or downvote the questions so we prioritize which ones get asked. If you want to ask a question of the group or you just want to make a comment on what's going on, please feel free to use the chat box. Uh, just make sure when you use the chat box, again, hit the chat button and open the window. Uh, make sure you send it to all panelists and all attendees so everyone gets the benefit of your comments and your questions. And finally, I will run a couple of polls today, uh, normal opening demographics and closing evaluation, and I will do one wellness check early on in the session today. So again, keep your eye out for the, the, chat, the poll boxes to pop up. And given that, I'm going to stop my share and turn it over to Dr. Michael Brown to introduce himself and get us started with the webinar today. Uh, thank you, Allie. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks for being here with me today. I was sharing with Joe off camera pre-webinar how excited I am to have this conversation with you about the physical dimension of our lives. If you were with me a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about the notion that there are 12 dimensions to a human being's life. The physical dimension, the emotional dimension, the spiritual dimension, the sexual dimension, recreational, on and on and on. What's interesting about these dimensions is they're all intersectional. How we respond and how we invest in each of these dimensions of our life affects all the other dimensions. Now, oftentimes as young professionals or middle-aged professionals, even those who are kind of turning the corner into the fourth season of their lives, we tend to think about most often the dimension of the professional dimension, the career, I am my job, I am my career. What's interesting about this conversation, even now during this pandemic, I think, and I shared this with Joel, that we underestimate the significance of the physical dimension of our lives and its effect upon our professional development and who we are as professionals, who we are in the industry, who we are in corporate America or in nonprofits or wherever you happen to serve. It, wherever you happen to land in this particular day. But it is so important. In fact, I even have some stories from this week in my own life as I'm continuing to try to increase, not just maintain, which is what the webinar is called, but to increase my physical vitality to be ready for whatever lies ahead in the new normal post-pandemic. Post, I think at this point we can say vaccination, right? When life becomes a little more normal. Let me define the physical dimension for you. There's really three parts to it. The physical dimension is that aspect of the human being's life that focuses on three things. Food consumption, exercise routines, and sleep patterns. That's really all that the physical dimension is. And so I've split out the other 12 dimensions and there's some other things that fall into those areas. But I want you to think with me today about Sleep routines, excuse me, sleep patterns, exercise routines, and food consumption. And most specifically, I want you to think about this notion. If you knew, if I can use this metaphor and this example, that the car that you received, the vehicle you began driving, maybe you inherited from your parents or a family member, or even you had that high school job and you're able to purchase your first vehicle, imagine if you knew that the very first car, very first vehicle you purchased at 16 years old when you got your license, or maybe 18 years old if you were in New York, right? Different ages, but in your later teen years, if you knew that would be the only vehicle you would be able to drive for the rest of your life, how would you treat it? What would you do to that vehicle, to that car, to that SUV, to whatever it might be, knowing that once it failed you and once it ceased to run, you would walk for the rest of your life everywhere. Now, I don't know about you, but I would actually done this poll with others in live settings and they've said, man, I would wash it, I'd wax it every day, I would give it the best fuel, the highest octane, on and on and on. And yet, to switch the conversation, think about our physical bodies. 
our physical body is the one thing that keeps us here on this planet. And when all 11 organ systems are circulatory, respiratory, digestive, et cetera, et cetera, when they're all working well, when they're nourished, when they're fit, when they're healthy, we have the strongest probability of them being the best version of ourselves. And yet, I have a confession to make. I don't always treat my physical body that well. In fact, let me propose to you today that sometimes, if not often, how you're feeling emotionally, how you're producing professionally, how you're experiencing vitality and even intimacy and connectedness in relationships and the relational dimension of your life often is tied to what fuel are you giving not to your 16 year old car, but to your body. And I want us to think about that today because it's interesting as we're in the middle of this pandemic, it actually is more than theory at this point. Who I am physically is going to have a profound effect upon me and my well being if and when I catch COVID 19. Now, hopefully, that doesn't happen. The vaccination comes first, but it's likely that I might or someone very dear to me. And I tell you what, I want to emerge from this pandemic more physically fit and in, in, in tip top condition than I ever was even going into the pandemic. And it's affecting me professionally, it affects my energy, because that's actually the language that we use there, right? How to increase physical vitality and energy. This isn't about looking fantastic, though that's fun, right? That's enjoyable to look fantastic or whatever age you find yourself. But it's more about energy level, it's more about focus, it's more about clarity. And as I think about those three different areas of food consumption, exercise routines, and sleep patterns, I actually rank them in this order. Food, then sleep, then exercise. That's for me personally. Now, here's what's interesting. If you go all over social media right now, everyone's saying, this is how you can create your in-home gym. And this is how you can create the perfect, like people are feeling like, I got to get back to the gym or I need to do my exercise routine. Yes, exercise is important, but it's like an oil change. It doesn't have the same significance as the food and the sleep do. And we tend to think, oh, I'll eat anything I want and I'll consume whatever I want. I'll put in my gas tank if I can go back to the vehicle metaphor from 16 years old, as long as I'm working out 30 minutes a day, right? And so forth and so on. And so I just want to talk a little bit about it. I want to give you some tips in this area. And I just want to just make this comment that we are in a culture in a day and age that struggles more with gluttony than ever before. This is how I define gluttony, my personal definition. It's an excessive physical indulgence. And so it might actually be working out. It might actually be food. It might actually be sleep. But it is basically a physical, excessive physical indulgence that attempts to satisfy an unrelated and often deeper craving. Let me say that again. Gluttony is an excessive physical indulgence that attempts to satisfy an unrelated and often deeper craving. And I think that's what we deal with a lot today. In the broadest sense, it's any physical activity, it's any physical inactivity taken to extremes, pursued to numb the pain, to forget personal disappointment or dissatisfaction in our lives. And so I just, I don't know how you're making sense of this conversation even so far, but I'm just gonna share a story from two days ago. I was feeling great when I woke up. I have a very specific routine. Um, I am permanently at this point intermittent fasting, so I only eat between 12 and eight, and there's a variety of reasons for that which has really helped me at 51 years old, be my best, most energetic physical self that I can, at least at this point, imagine. But I was really getting moody. I was feeling extremely tired and I was even getting a little bit feisty with my wife and my children. And I was like, what is going on? And then it hit me. The kids had made homemade pretzels that day. In the same day, my older kids had experimented making these mini cinnamon sugar donuts. As well, we ordered Italian pizza from our favorite Italian restaurant takeout, all within a four or five hour period. And then I was wondering why I felt like I was in a coma. And I was wondering why I was, and I was like, I'm the life coach. I'm the one who teaches this. The reason I feel, this has nothing to do with my wife being overly sensitive. It had nothing to do with my children being annoying. It had zero to do with the fact that 
I'm in the middle of a pandemic and the professionally, there's all these demands on my life. I was eating too much gluten. I was not filling my fuel tank. I was basically, if I can use a metaphor, imagine taking Dunkin' Donuts and cramming them into your fuel tank. How long do you think that car is going to run? And yet we do that with our bodies all the time. We put food, things that aren't even real food inside of this thing that keeps my feet. The only thing that keeps my feet on this planet here with you right now is this physical body. The fact that I can see and hear and listen and engage and walk. The fact that I can do push-ups in my office, right? Or whatever the case may be is because I'm giving attention to food consumption, sleep patterns, and exercise routine. Now, for all of us, let's be honest, our rhythms are off and the way we used to eat is off. I actually had a, a client recently say to me, it's been so, that my family, my meaningful family activities have been baking. So on one hand, I'm doing all these great family activities, but they're actually backfiring in the physical dimension of my life. So again, we have to think about these things. There's good things that are coming from the pandemic, and there's other things that have become more challenging. Exercise routines, which is why even now here in my office, I have my jump rope and I have my bands. And every hour my alarm goes off, I head out in the lobby because I'm the only one here. We're in isolation. And I go out there and I just start doing my, jump, my jumping jacks, my jump rope. Every hour, I'm trying to do more physical activity than even before. I actually have here, I'm, I'm reaching underneath my desk now. I purchased something that is horrifying. And I wasn't going to do this, but this is show and tell today. I despise V8, especially low sodium V8. But as I break my fast every day at noon, that's how I break my fast. I break my fast with 100% real food. So let me just share some perspective with you, maybe in each, a few tips maybe in each of these three areas. And then after the webinar, and I'm sure there'll be some questions that begin to come. After the webinar, um, we will begin to have some, uh, an opportunity for you to receive my a handout that actually highlights some of these things. But let's just see where the conversation goes in our final, I guess I'm looking over my clock, 17 minutes together. Any thoughts that are coming out right now, Joel, that I should be aware of? Um, I'm seeing- Not, Nothing oh, yet, just a reminder to people that if they have a uh, question, uh, they can put, uh, go to the Q&A box and put it in and we'll tr uh, try to make sure Michael gets a chance to enter it before we're done. Fantastic. So what I would suggest, even, even at some point today, is that you would do a little bit of personal inventory. And as you think about the current condition of your physical body and your physical dimension of your life, I would want you to grade yourself. A, A minus, B, B plus, B, well, however you want to do that. But more importantly than the letter grade is to think to yourself and begin to reflect, what are the significant factors that I considered when grading myself? And what do I think is contributing to the letter grade that I've given? And I think more than anything, if you can take some time in the next hours and days to think about who do I want to be physically? And let's just talk strictly from a safety. When we emerge from this shelter in place, you know, I'm thinking if there's ever a time where my lungs need to be healthier than ever, if I've been smoking or vaping or eating food that isn't food, like now's the time. I want to be ready for whatever comes my way, right? Now is the time to take seriously my physical well-being. This is not even at this point a part of just, uh, oh, it would be nice to be physically robust and feel fantastic physically. It's, it's really important. And in some cases, a matter of life and death. So that said, I want to really just bring this, this principle home and, and just share a few principles with you. So here, let me talk a little bit about first, in the order that I prioritize them, food consumption. Best principles and practices of food and nutrition. Um, let me start by saying this, that as we think about food, think about food as fuel. That what you're actually eating, think about it as fuel. So I know for me personally, when I go into a grocery store, I try to only shop the outside of the grocery store. Because typically that's where the fuel is, right? The yogurts, the milks, the dairies, the breads, the, they tend to be the things that are one ingredient or so. And they tend to be the things, did you realize you can skip the entire, every aisle of every grocery store and actually do really well? Now, there are two exceptions to my rule, coffee and chocolate. They never are in the outside of the store. They tend to be somewhere down the aisles, and I do make my way down there as well. Because again, I think I can live even my best version, knowing that food is fuel, shopping the outside of a store. There's a tip. Fitness begins with the fork. If I can also be so 
candid abs are made in the kitchen six packs and i'm talking budweiser but six packs are made in the kitchen and i will say this too i think the diets are dumb and the reason i say that is diet by its very definition means i'm going to do something short term that's good for me knowing full well that i'm only going to i'm going to go back to my normal self somewhere down the road Whatever choices we make in regards to food, I just want to encourage us, do whatever is sustainable over time. Now, I'm not going to get into all the keto, Atkins, this and that. I've tried a various variety of different things, but I will tell you what, for me personally, intermittent fasting has become just amazing. Because with intermittent fasting, I don't start eating till noon and I end by eight. And I'm trying to actually eat really healthy during those eight hours. What's great about that, it keeps my calories down. It allows my mornings, my brain and my mind is on fire. And I'm really alert, I'm creative, because hunger, it's not starvation, I'm fine. Even though I say I'm starving, I'm not. Hunger is really valuable to keeping the nine stimulated. The minute I have that good Jimmy John's sandwich, I keep bringing out all these different brands, I hope no one's offended when they listen, but I love Jimmy John's, but a good Jimmy John's sandwich puts me, to, I'm ready for a power nap, right? All that yummy white bread and mayonnaise. And so in many ways, what's happening is I try to push myself till noon or one, and I'm super productive in the morning. And then I begin to, I start with my V8 and I begin to do some things. But what's, it's very sustainable for me because I don't need to deny myself anything. I simply delay. And it's incredibly sustainable and it's had huge health benefits, gut health and so forth and, and, and so forth. So every bite counts to really get in this mindset that we want to eat to live, not live to eat. And let's just be honest, friends. You know, people say it's so hard to eat healthy. I'd say, yeah, but it's even harder and more miserable to feel unhealthy. So this is what I like to say, life is hard. Which hard do you choose? Do you choose the hard of, man, I'm gonna have to say no to the seventh bite of cheesecake, or I'm gonna have to say no to feeling in food coma for the next three hours. Life's hard. And it's hard to be the best version of ourselves. And so I wanna focus focus more on those kinds of things. So a few more comments about eating and then I can see questions are beginning to pop up, but eat to live, do not live to eat. And one of the things that's very helpful for me is I just decide what I'm gonna eat at the beginning of each day. And so I begin to have a pretty good sense as I start my day, what am I gonna eat today? How am I gonna balance this out in my head? And that's been very helpful because any premeditated decision tends to produce more positive outcomes than spontaneous decisions. Even when I head to the pantry to get my favorite snack, which is Cheez-Its deep dipped in peanut butter. I decide beforehand how many I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have 10 Cheez-Its and I'm gonna pull out them and I'm gonna put them in a bowl as opposed to I'm gonna grab the box and head to the TV, right? So again, it's all about moderation. It's about decisions. It's about being intentional and living life on purpose. And if there's ever a dimension that's more important than before, it is right here, right now. Again, I'm going to go back to what I said before. It is the one thing. Once this body stops working, I'm no longer with you. I'm no longer in this space doing the things I get to do and the things that I get to love. So one of the things I've done even during the pandemic, and I would not even necessarily suggest this to you, uh, though I don't think it's going to harm you if you do it, is I've eliminated, zero, I have zero alcohol through the entire pandemic because I can't think of one positive thing that comes from it, except to numb the pain and make me deal less with the real stress that's in my life. I'd rather deal more productively with that. And so I'm trying to think really proactively, what does it look like to be the best version of myself? And part of it is I have this dream. Now end with this with food and then we'll start jumping into some, some other things. Oh, I see questions are piling up, so this will be great. Is that I have this dream and this vision that is crystal clear in my head of climbing trees with my grandkids at 85 years old. Now, I'm, I may never make 85 years old. In fact, my, my kids joke with me and say, but I have nine children. My, my children already say, but you don't even climb trees now. Why would you climb trees at 85 with our grandchildren on your back? I'm not gonna let you do that. And so it's funny because even now, I'm expecting my first grandchild. And I told my daughter in October, I said, this is gonna be awesome. Once little Michael Jr. is born, and they're not going to do that. They, they decided to name him something else. But I'm going to put him on my back. We're going to climb trees. And they're like, no, you're not. But that's the, see, part of it is I have this dream and this perspective in mind that if that were to be true, what choices do I make today in light of that? 
So I'm at 220. I got 10 minutes left. Um, you, you want to take a couple questions? Yeah, I'm seeing a couple of things. Why don't you pull out a couple that you think are sure. most important so, so right now? We had one person ask if your fasting routine includes beverages. So when you're fasting, do you still drink? And, and if so, what? Oh, huge amounts of water. So huge amounts of water and black coffee. So when I wake up in the morning, um, now, interestingly, now that I'm getting, I'm actually getting a little more sleep than I typically did because there's not quite the rush and the commute and the various things that I need to typically do. And so I don't need coffee necessarily. I really like it, but I will drink black coffee or, or tea, unsweetened, no sugar. And, and let me just say something real quick about sugar and gluten. I think they're both pretty poisonous. And I'm not trying to like slam gluten. I'm not even trying to but process sugar and all those things. I tell you what, um, the joy that comes from a donut lasts about three minutes. And then the pain that comes from the donut lasts about three hours, at least in my mental fog. In fact, I once said this, my friend once said to me, oh, and this doesn't sound horrible if, 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 if McDonald's ever listens to this online, but a friend said to me once, they said, no human in the history of the world has ever eaten a Big Mac and thought to themselves an hour later, that was the best decision of my life. Though let's admit, they're so good, <laughs> all right? But again, do I want to experience temporary pleasure? to the taste buds and at what cost, right? It's a, that, that donut though, that three minutes, it's, it's a good three <laughs> it minutes. It is. Let's be honest. Um, it is, and so in many ways, even with sugar, and I think I may have shared this, we've seen some interesting research lately that there's no return on investment after the third bite of dessert. Yeah. yeah. So have whatever you want, three bites of it. Three bites, yeah. That's right, because again, I don't know if you've been to any, I won't mention any major chains that have amazing cheesecakes, but I love a major chain that has these amazing cheesecakes that are 1,500 calories. But about 12 or 14 bites in, and I'm still only a quarter way through the cheesecake, I'm thinking, this ain't doing it anymore. It's just only making me the worst version of myself. So anyway, I think, I, oh, I wish I could underscore the value of food and how important it's affecting your emotional well-being, all how you're feeling during this time, the energy when you're sitting in your office, sheltering in place. Now, to exercise, I saw someone say they feel guilty. They're not getting the exercise done. I miss my rhythms and my exercise here on the college campus, walking the rec center every day, and I'm trying to. But here's the deal. I'm not going to be able to have the gains if you're looking for that, the kind of exercise I once did. But I'm actually accomplishing my goals and surpassing my goals physically more with the fork than with the weights. And so during this time, I'm just going to own the fact that I'm going to have to run less. Well, I shouldn't say run less. I can run more. I have my jump up. I could do more cardio. But some of the things that I like to do with, with, with weights and with uh, machines and equipment, I just am not going to have access to for a while. Right? So I'm just going to have to say, so instead of feeling bad about that or guilty about that, I'm going to redirect most of my energy toward the sleeping and the food, which is going to have greater, far greater effects than anything I could have done anyways. And I'm just going to walk a lot. I'm going to stand a lot. And then every hour, I'm going to exercise. Every hour, I'm going to say, you know what? Why not do 10 push-ups? Every hour, why not grab my jump rope and do 50 jump rope? Like, why not? Just, and I'm actually hoping that I'll accomplish more because of just being intentional and maximizing my time. So let, let's, let's jump into then sleep and uh, yeah. exercise. So sleep, so I think sure one of the things that's... That. So I think in many ways, what's great is... I, my biggest tip on sleep is grade school revisited. Bedtimes are not just for kids. And so people have asked me often, because um, I, I seem pretty youthful for my age, and, and even beyond food and exercise and, and just some of the things that I do as a life coach, they say, what is, your, what is your secret to the fountain of youth? And I say, if there's one thing that I can really credit, it is my sleep patterns. I go to bed about the same time every night. 365 days a year and get up the same time every morning. In fact, even on my podcast, the Three Words podcast, one of them is wake up earlier. One of my coaches gets up at 4 a.m. I like to get up around 6 a.m., um, but I can even get up earlier. And there's something just so powerful about mornings. But mornings don't work if you go to bed at 2. So let me just, let me just share a simple principle. When I'm here on the campus with college students, even there's a Starbucks underneath me here in the Student Union Conference Center. And I'll get in line with students at Starbucks who look exhausted. And I'll say, how are you doing today? And they always say, I'm so tired. My follow-up question is always the same. So when did you choose to be tired? And they look at me like, really? I didn't choose to be tired. I'm just tired. College is tiring. And I said, well, what time did you go to bed last night? 3 a.m. 
So when you could have gone to bed at midnight or 11 and chose to stay up till three, you chose to be tired today. And they kind of go, oh, I've never thought about that. Typically, we are as tired as we choose to be. We tend to think of tiredness and exhaustion as a circumstance and not a choice, right? And not a choice. In many ways, if I go to bed about the same time every night, I get up to my sleep rhythms, oh, it's the way my body heals. And you could do a whole study on the value of sleep, rising and shine the same time every day, even when you're tired, finding your sleep number and then sticking to it. And then also that wind down ritual, that wind up ritual. And we know for a fact that those who sleep less than six hours a night of really good sleep, they have a decreased lifespan. But we also know the same is true for those who sleep more than 10 hours a night. Now you need to find that space between six and 10. Like what is your, what body need at your season of life for your activity level, for the calories, for the person you are, and so forth and so on. As well, and I'll speak to the men here for just a second, any men listening on, but sleep deprived men on average consume 300 more calories a day than those who are rested. I saw that re recent research, which I thought, and I'm, I'm guessing this is true for our female friends as well. Because again, I just think when we, we tend to be less proactive and less thoughtful about even our food choices and our exercise routines when our sleep is off. So those are my thoughts about sleep. How are we doing? I, get, I can wrap up here with, with just a few final thoughts about exercise. Yeah, go with some exercise and then we'll, we'll stay on a couple minutes late and take a, yeah. see if there's any more so, questions. Uh, it really, I'm not, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a fitness coach. I actually hired a fitness coach for 90 days and I think fitness coaches are great, but quite honestly, it's not rocket science. My goal, there's really two goals, two goals with any exercise routine. And that is to build strength and manage weight. Now, we all have different strategies in how we're going to do that, but you want to build strength and you want to so build muscle, build strength while maintaining a healthy weight. And those are really the two goals. Obviously, there's others that have more significant goals. I want to have this kind of shoulder and this kind of body and these kind of, this kind of six pack, whatever. That's all great and well, but in, in the grand scheme of things, if we can manage our weight and build strength and core strength particularly, then we're going to be in a great, and that's going to burn calories. That's going to make us feel great. It's going to keep, uh, I, I'm a big fan of chiropractic care um, as well. And just really keeping my body at the maximize um, muscular, skeletal, um, and so forth, uh, efficiency and effectiveness and so forth. So I won't go into too much detail about that. But what I would say is, if you drew a line from the physical dimension to your life to all the other dimensions, financial, those who are more physically fit, tend to make more money. Sexual, well, that's a, a given. Emotional, relational, intellectual, career, professional, cultural. All of these things have such an effect. The physical dimension of our life have so much effect. And I forgot, even two days ago, when I'm eating donuts, pretzels, and pizza in the same day. And I was embarrassed to come on and have to, and I'm going to teach you on physical vitality, right? But it just was so helpful for me to realize, yes, this is really true. It is really true. It began to affect all these dimensions of my life. So again, it's not, I want you to be during this time full of energy. And I will tell you more than ever, I've had people share with me how tired and exhausted they are and lacking motivation and so forth. And I get it. And it is. Even people who've had trouble, have never had trouble sleeping before, I've been, a lot of my clients have been trouble sleeping. Their mind is racing. There's so much going on in our world today. Um, but let me just, if I can, say this one thing and then if I, I'll field some questions. I want you to think about your life as a 500 page novel. And all that is happening right now in this thing that we call the pandemic is like seven to 10 pages of that 500 page novel. But the choices we're making within those seven to 10 pages, it's actually going to set the trajectory for the rest of the book, the rest of your story, for the next chapter and all the way till the conclusion of your story. We're going to look back to this time. And we're going to be talking about this time for years and decades. And our kids and grandkids are going to be talking about this time. What did we do? How did we live? What matters most? But more than anything, we don't want to hit pause during this time, the pandemic pause, right? We want 
to be all in during this time. Emotionally, physically, relationally, that's my next webinar I'll do with unique venues, how to be relationally connected during this time, during a time of social distancing. Um, but it really begins with our physical dimension. It's so, so important. Questions? All right. We had one from before that was um, someone is on, working on a kind of a plan where they've got a limit, a 1,200 calorie day limit. Um, and at the end of the day, sometimes they're worried that they haven't hit their limit. And they're saying, you know, should they eat just for the sake of eating? Or what do you think about having to achieve a limit or make sure you get there or something like that? And again, I'm not a nutritionist and I'm not a, you know, an expert in this area. But I will say that, um, that hunger, a little bit of hunger is always good for me personally, because I feel like hunger reminds me that I'm achieving my goals and it keeps my mind and my alertness on high level. And I just feel better when I'm a little bit hungry. I, you know, the grumpiest day of the year, Thanksgiving. I mean, we, we look so forward to it. And by the end of the day, we hate each other. We roll up in our blankets watching football and we don't want to talk to anyone. We wonder why that is nothing to do with racial. You just basically, You've been given into gluttony. You're thinking, I'm going to experience Thanksgiving that's going to remind me of this childhood in my life. What really matters most? It lasts. The pleasure lasts for 30 minutes. Right? So, I, again, I don't have a lot of details. I, I don't want to go too much because, again, you need to consult your doctors and your fitness people and your nutritionists. As you're, I don't want to get into the weeds too much with those kind of things. But, yep, Chuck's going to jump in. Well, and I don't, know if, I don't know if Joel saw this question, but one came up in the uh, chat box. and. Um, Someone was saying that they have tried the intermittent fasting, fasting, and um, everything seems to work for them pretty well, except for the black coffee. It's a no-go. It's a little bit too bitter for them. However, the caffeine is something they need, and they want to know, is the tablespoon or two of, of, of dairy completely voiding the rest of the impact? No, and again, there's, here's what's great. Here, here's what's super great. Don't get caught up in the rules, right? Don't get caught up so much in the rules that you miss the big picture. The big picture is I'm just, the big picture of intermittent fasting for me is I'm going to say no to food on a regular basis that I simply don't eat. Okay. And I'm going to give my body time to rest and for my digestive tract to actually experience some, some joy <laughs> before I stick it the next one. Right. So in many ways, let me just, this is one really important principle that's helped this, that's sustainable. I make the rules for my life. And so I can break the rules. And when I get so caught up in the fact that I have all of this, I have to do it exactly right. And, and quite honestly, even if you have a bad day where it doesn't go very well, you have one of two choices. You have one of three choices after a bad day in the physical dimension of your life. You can punish yourself and say, oh, I'm not going to eat at all. And you'll do that for a little while, but that's going to backfire, right? So punishing yourself doesn't help. You're going to say, well, I'll wait till January 1st, 2021. I knew I couldn't do it. 2021 would be a great start. And so then we just blow the whole thing. You know what the best next choice is after a bad meal? A good meal. Mm -hmm. What's the best, best choice after a bad day physically? The next day is a good day physically. Again, part of it's the patterns. And so I'll tell you what, my, if you put some good milk and even a little bit of cream, I'd probably avoid the sugar. Because again, and if you want to put the sugar in during your intermittent fasting time, who cares? I mean, who's going to tell you otherwise, right? But it will trigger some more of those hunger pains that you won't experience as much. Sugar does that. It brings the hunger pains, and then you start feeling that frustration, like, oh, I want to eat three hours before I want to eat something. But I'm glad I get to share about the bigger principle. The bigger principle is you set the rules for your life. I, I like to listen to fitness coaches. I've hired some, and I've nutritionists, and trying to think through my own life. But then at the end of the day, I get to decide. And I set the schedule. I set the the routines and the rhythms in my life uh, that seem to be the best work for me. But then when, I, when they're not working as much, I don't want to make excuses like, well, it just wasn't working for me. If it's really not working for me, but is it the fact that I don't have the discipline or I'm not making the choices to make it work? A couple, we got two questions and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. So one, a uh, couple, couple people asked about sleep. It, it seems like some people are getting more sleep, but also having a problem with sleeping through the night or mm -hmm. at least getting the brain to shut off in order to then get to sleep. So what are some advice that you have for yep. people to kind of turn it off and then stay, or if they do wake up in the night, be able to go back to sleep, sleep quickly? Yeah, well, the getting, again, I, I don't rarely, I rarely wake up in the middle of the night. I say middle of the night, that's harder. 
because obviously I, now if you have great exercise cardio earlier in your day, I wouldn't push it to the night too much because then it's hard to go to sleep, but there's certain, and you can Google this bedtime routines, but this is also all of the stuff you'd Google and you'd think about in terms of bedtime routines. They're a little bit out the window right now because there's a whole new layer of stress and worry and anxiety and things that are happening right now that we've never encountered before. And so I think the best advice I can give you, if you happen to wake up really early, just get up. You can't fall back to sleep at 4.30 a.m. Get up and make that wake up earlier and begin to maximize your morning. Because here's what I love to do. There's times where I don't get the sleep that I want. I would rather have a power nap in the middle of the day. In fact, right here in my office. This is like my show and tell day. I have a neck pillow. And I have no problem in the middle of the day turning off my light and putting a sign on my door. My whole staff knows he's taking a power nap. I'll lay right down here on the middle of the floor of my neck pillow and I'll take a 15 minute power nap. There's five levels of power naps. So again, get up early, maximize your day and then Halfway through the day, don't feel guilty about it. You just accomplished two hours of extra work in the morning. So part of it is I'm not going to fight myself because that's annoying. If you wake up in the middle of the night and you cannot fall back to sleep, why not get up and work for two hours, make part of your work day, and then grab a power nap later in the day? So again, think creatively about those things. But also, I think mindfulness, meditation, it goes back to the emotional well-being that we talked about a couple weeks ago, is that when we're in a great spot, personally in all those dimensions and we're really taking care of ourselves and thinking choosing gratitude and there's a variety of meditation exercises i could talk to you about at some point if anyone can reach out to me directly if you want but it's just this idea of um of being able to to, to, to not allow worry to build a nest and a buttress within our hearts and our minds because that's typically why it's been hard to fall asleep and stay asleep because man our minds are going 100 miles an hour so one last question and then we'll wrap up here. Um, someone asked a great question about, so you've given some good advice here in different areas, but what are some strategies then for self accountability? Cause so much of this is about holding yourself accountable to these things yeah. that you've talked about. So what are some strategies? I'll share, I'll share three quick things in response to that. First is you need a dream. You need to picture yourself at 85 years old and who you want to be and how you want to live and what you want to do without the perspective, without the dream discipline is hard. Practices flow out of perspective. Discipline flows out of dreams. If you don't have a big picture in your mind, you'll live for the moment. It will be hard to delay immediate gratification. Secondly, invite others into your journey with you. We know for a fact that those who do New Year's resolutions and don't tell a soul, they have a 20% chance of achieving that resolution. It jumps to almost 50-ish percent if you actually tell someone about that resolution. It jumps to over 80% if you say, let's do it together. So I think in many ways, self-accountability, you need the dream, but then you need to have community. If there's ever a time when we need community to accomplish hard and difficult things, it is now. And here's the deal, particularly in those first 21 days and then those 90 days. So let me just say this, 21 days to establish a habit, 90 days to create a new lifestyle rhythm. So if you can have someone on your journey, particularly for those 21 days, and even checking in with you on a regular basis in those 90 days, post 90 days, you're going to be in a great place. That doesn't mean you don't have community. That was the second thing I wanted to share. So dreaming, accountability. Oh, final thought. Stop thinking about changes. Start thinking about choices. Because what happens typically is this is when we begin to slow down. And this is when we begin to stop achieving the things we want to achieve in the physical dimension of our life. Is that we have this picture of a change that we want and it's not happening fast enough, so we stop. Don't get caught up in the mountain. Don't be thinking just about the top of the mountain. Think about the next step. And here's the deal. The person who, who all they think about is the end goal and is consumed with the outcome, it gets discouraging. You think about the next choice. You can, don't think about changing, think about choosing. And over time, you choose your way right into change. Those are my thoughts. That's awesome. Well, again, uh, thank you for your time today and for another very inspirational session. We really appreciate it. Uh, very quickly to those that are left, I just want to um, remind people that we have some more webinars. Whoops, I went one too far. Some more webinars coming up. Uh, in fact, we're, you're getting a sneak peek because we're just announcing the next wave of stuff. Uh, Michael's last wellness workshop is uh, next week on relational connections. Um, 
Then we jump into some new uh, series out there. One is the Taking Your Business to the Next Level series. Uh, and you can see we've got uh, one on April 28th about uh, developing a business plan and one on May 14th about marketing strategies. And then we've also got the Unique series where we're gonna do, have some different experts come in uh, and do some focus on universal design for meetings and events on April 30th. A conversation about Gen Generation Z as a consumer on May 5th. And uh, Michael will join us again on May 13th to talk about leadership, uh, probably in the hopes that we're all gonna be thinking about making another transition back into hopefully a more normal working environment. So you can find all of the information about these. We'll be publishing them in the next day or so, and you can find them on our uniquevenues.com slash resources page. So again, I just wanna thank everyone for being here today. Thank Michael for his time. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on a future webinar and everyone have a great rest of their day and a great weekend. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks.